everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States. Through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories, I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. How are you guys doing? How is your day going so far? How is the weather where you're at? Is it sunny? Is it cloudy? Is it rainy? Is it nice outside? I hope so. In Asheville, North Carolina, where I'm currently located, it's chilly. So I need to go outside wearing a scarf and jacket and beanie. But that's okay. Spring is just around the corner. It's really close. It usually starts in March. In any case, today we're going to go through a very fun expression and a common one, which is give me some sugar. If this is your first time listening to an expression episode on the American English podcast, you should know that there are three main parts to them. First, you'll hear a joke. Then I'll go through the expression of the day, give me some sugar. And last but not least, we'll do a pronunciation exercise. In the second part of episode 160, you'll hear a cultural fact about the United States. Today, I've decided to answer the question how cereal became the number one breakfast food in the United States. It's relevant, it not only provides cultural insight, but it prepares you for conversations. I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with my friends about our favorite cereals from our childhoods. So if you wanna spark a conversation with a native speaker, why not ask them, what was your favorite cereal when you were a kid? I guarantee you'll not only see their eyes light up, but you'll awaken a sense of nostalgia in them because cereal is common in the United States. Have you ever been to a U.S. grocery store? You'll notice that the cereal aisle goes from one side of the store all the way to the other. They're stacked usually from the top shelf all the way to the bottom shelf. So it's a relevant topic. Stay tuned for part two. It should come out in about a week. Let's begin with today's lesson. And as usual, we'll start with a joke. Why is Ed Sheeran obsessed with rainbow lucky charms? Do you know why? He's in love with the shape of you. All right. Uh, I don't think I need to explain that. That song was incredibly popular some years back. But let's go through it because this is an English lesson. Lucky Charms is a type of cereal. Actually, it was my favorite cereal growing up. I remember begging my mom to buy Lucky Charms when we went to the grocery store. Because what kid doesn't love colorful, sugary food. It was a special treat. Lucky Charms cereal consists of oat pieces and marshmallows. And the marshmallows are shaped like a variety of different things that are considered lucky in the United States. They're charms. Hearts, stars, horseshoes, clovers and blue moons, pots of gold and rainbows, and red balloons. Yes. There was a little tune to that in their commercial that I remember from my childhood. Hearts, stars, and horseshoes, clovers, and balloons. Lots of golden rainbows and the red balloons. Lucky charms. So back to the joke. There are marshmallows shaped like rainbows, and rainbows look like the letter U, which explains why Ed Sheeran made the famous song, I'm in love with the shape of you. I'm just kidding. I'm assuming he was referring to the shape of Y-O-U, you as a person. Let's hear the joke one more time. Why is Ed Sheeran obsessed with rainbow lucky charms? He's in love with the shape of you. (laughs) 
All right. I hope that makes sense. Kind of funny. Let's go through the expression of the day, which is give me some sugar. We'll go through the individual words first. Gimme. Gimme is an informal contraction of give me. Gimme. Gimme. It's how we say give me when we're speaking quickly. It's very common in casual speech and texting. It, of course, expresses a desire for something. Give me a minute, I'm thinking. In other words, give me a minute, I'm thinking. Give me a minute, I'm thinking. Give me a hug, I'm sad. In other words, give me a hug, I'm sad. Give me a hug, I'm sad. Could you hear the difference there? Give me versus give me. You could also call give me a reduced form. Some, well, some is a determiner used to refer to an unspecified quantity or number of something. I'd like to buy some apples from the store. How many apples? I don't know, maybe three or four? Some apples. Sugar. Sugar refers to a sweet-tasting, soluble carbohydrate used in food and drinks to enhance flavor. The most common type of sugar in baking in the U.S. is granulated sugar. Granulated sugar. We also have powdered sugar, which is very light and fine, also known as confectioner's sugar or icing sugar. And then we have brown sugar, both light and dark. The list goes on. There are so many types of sugar. I like the light brown sugar. It has a caramel flavor and makes cookies and desserts taste amazing. So what does the expression mean? Give me some sugar is a casual expression used to request some sort of physical affection from someone. So perhaps a hug, perhaps a kiss, some physical contact. So where did this come from? Historians believe give me some sugar emerged from Southern American English, where sugar is used as a term of endearment. It goes a little bit deeper than that, though. In Southern culture, in the South, sweet tea, pralines or pralines, and foods with quite a bit of sugar have long been associated with warmth affection, and hospitality. Therefore, give me some sugar may have evolved as a playful way to ask for that physical contact, invoking the idea of sharing sweetness and warmth with someone. The phrase has become widely known outside of the South, through pop culture, through movies, television shows, and literature. It spread. So nowadays, you'll hear this expression all throughout the United States. Give me some sugar. Now let's go through some examples so that you can hear this expression in everyday contexts. Number one, imagine you're walking down the street and you run into a former classmate, an old friend that you haven't seen for years. You could approach him or her and say, wow, you haven't changed a bit. Give me some sugar, old friend, before giving them a hug. All right, notice my delivery. It would be awkward to say, give me some sugar. You say, give me some sugar. Give me some sugar, old friend. It's very playful. So number two, as you know, I have two daughters. One is always with me next to my side. We say she's attached at the hip, meaning she's always right next to me. My other daughter, the eldest, is a daddy's girl. So she's not always at my side. She likes to give a lot of hugs and affection to Lucas. I often look at her with puppy dog eyes, so really sad, and say, Julia, give me some sugar too. In other words, give me some affection too. And she'll run to me and throw her arms around my neck. So you may be wondering, can you use this in the past tense? Yes, 
And if you do, you're not going to say gimme because gimme is a contraction of give me. You would have to use gave. And we don't have a reduced form with gave. So listen to how I use it in the past. Number three, imagine you go on a date on Saturday. And on Sunday, your best friend wants to know how the date went. You explain, we went out to dinner, we had some drinks. It was a good time. If your friend is nosy, in other words, if they like getting into your business, if they like to know more details, they might say, and like, did you kiss? And then what? What happened? If you don't want to go into detail, you can say, yeah, I gave him or her some sugar. In other words, there was physical affection of some kind. I gave him or her some sugar. Gave. Gave. So yes, it is possible to use this expression in the past and in other tenses. For example, you haven't given me any sugar today. Although I have to say the present form, give me some sugar, is a lot more common. At least when I really think about it. Once again, we say give me some sugar when we want to express desire for someone else's warmth and affection. Now, since affection comes in a variety of forms, get creative with it. I can imagine a 20-year-old guy saying, give me some sugar, brah, and then giving his friend a fist pump. In other words, hitting his knuckles against his friend's knuckles, giving him a fist pump. Give me some sugar, bro. Maybe you go in for a friendly handshake, a hug, or a kiss on the cheek. Maybe you'd say it to a significant other if you're sitting too far from them on the couch and you want them to cuddle up at your side. You can say, come on, give me some sugar. The point is, it's friendly, warm, and casual. And to be safe, I'd use it with people who you feel comfortable with because it is playful. Let's move on to the pronunciation section. We'll use the statement, come on, give me some sugar. Repeat after me, come on. Come on, give me some. Come on, give me some sugar. Once again, we are using the reduced form of give me, gimme, gimme. And with sugar, you can pronounce it without the R. Sugar, sugar, instead of saying sugar, sugar. This is sort of optional. It makes it more playful if you say it without the R. And the conjugation, repeat after me. I'll give you some sugar. You'll give them some sugar. She'll give you some sugar. He'll give you some sugar. It'll give you some sugar. We'll give you some sugar. They'll give you some sugar. Now, the pronunciation of these last sentences might be a little bit challenging for you, especially for those who don't have the dark L in your native language. If that's the case, don't worry. You'll just need to practice this a bit more. You'll hear the dark L in all of these contractions. Repeat after me. I'll. Or sometimes you'll hear I'll pronounced as all. Yule, she'll, heel, it'll, wheel, they'll. Now rewind this part as many times as you need until these sounds feel normal coming out of your mouth. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember, if you have a hard time understanding what I say, be sure to sign up to premium content. 
with premium content for season four, you'll not only get the transcripts for every episode from 151 to 200, you'll also get a quiz, the premium podcast player to work through the text and practice your pronunciation and much, much more. You can find the link to season four and all premium content in the episode notes. Be sure to stay tuned. Part two will answer that very fun question, how cereal became a number one breakfast food in the U.S. See you then. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon.